Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, let's take a look at this integral today. Um, so, all right, where are we going to start with this? Well, um, I don't see an obvious reparameterization uh, right away. Um, so let's go ahead and do a substitution. Let's let u equal to e to the negative x. And that implies the rest of the stuff. So these are all our pieces for our substitution. Next, we just plug in the substitution directly. I mean, we, we literally plug in everything that it says. Um, our x is going to be equal to negative natural log u, so we replace all our x's with negative natural log u. And um, we replaced our e to the x with a 1 over u. We've got our negative 1 over u du. And of course, um, if we let u equal e to the negative x, our bounds um, go from 1 to 0. So we have that. And then the next step is just simplifying that right there. And it simplifies to that. All right. So next, um, let's create a function of t equal to this. And next, we'll use the Leibniz rule for differentiation under the integral sign to take f prime of t. And then we'll do it again to take f double prime of t. And now you'll notice that if we evaluated this function right here, f double prime of t, at the point t is equal to zero, we have the value of our original integral. So let's just state that. i is equal to f double prime at zero. All right. So we all know this, we know this identity, 1 over 1 minus x is equal to uh, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n, and that's good um, on our interval of integration. Um, if we take a derivative on each side of that, we'll get the following. So we know that 1 over 1 minus x all squared is equal to this sum right here. And um, we can rewrite, notice that we don't need the n is equal to 0 term. So let's just start it at n is equal to 1. All right, so now we're going to replace this 1 over 1 minus x all squared with this sum right here. So this is what we have. Our f of t is equal to this. And then I switch the um, summation and integration notations and bring out the... Uh, Well, I actually shouldn't have done that. Um, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. And then what we're going to do is bring this uh, this x to the t inside our sum. And all in all, f of t evaluates to this. So you can see in the next step, all I did was... Um, I switched the integral and uh, summation notations and brought the n outside of the integral since it's independent of x. Then I evaluated the integral, and what you end up with is this. So we have, don't forget, this, this is just f of t. It's another way of representing f of t. And if we can get to f double prime of t, uh, we pretty much have our answer. All right, so f prime of t is just the derivative with respect to t term by term of this sum right here, and that's equal to this. And then we'll go one more time, differentiate with respect to t to get f double prime of t, and that's equal to this. Again, we just differentiate this term by term. All right. We know uh, from before that i is equal to f double prime of 0. So all we have to do is plug in 0, and we have our answer. So that's equal to 2 times the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of n over n plus 0, because don't forget we replaced our t with a 0, all cubed. And you'll notice that's just n over n cubed, so that's 1 over n squared. So um, it simplifies to this, and you'll notice that this is just the sum of the reciprocals of the squares, and that equals pi, or pi squared over 6. Um, so multiplying that by 2, and we have our answer pi squared over 3. So in conclusion, 
there we go. That integral, the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared e to the x over e to the x minus 1 all squared dx is equal to pi squared over 3. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.